We'll just bow our heads and begin with the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ask, and you shall receive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These words of today's gospel are a promise from God when he said, ask and you shall receive. Now, is our Lord lying in this statement? Is he tricking us in this statement? Is he just saying that to make us feel good and he doesn't really mean it? Now, we've all heard people say, well, God doesn't answer my prayers. In fact, we may have even said it ourselves. But our Lord doesn't have the same fickleness and unreliability as we human beings do. Remember, He's God. He's perfect. And He's serious about what He promises us. Now, first, we need to reflect on who we are. Of course, we can't panic at the truth. We have to come to grips with it. Now, our own personal self-esteem and the honest truth will sometimes have a serious conflict with each other when it comes to examining ourselves and our consciences and our motives for doing things. But once we examine ourselves, we'll see that we're not as good as we originally thought. And so for starters then, we've got to admit that we are poor in all things. Then once we do that, then we've got to admit that all things come from God. Because remember, He's the Creator. He created all things. Now the book of Job tells us, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the Lord. So everything comes from God. This is why if we pray, we'll be rich in all things because God has promised to grant the prayer of him who prays to him. What greater love can a friend show to another than to say, ask of me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. Well, this is what God is asking of us. Actually, this is what God is telling us. So if we are poor, then the fault is our own because we do not ask God for the graces which we stand in need of. Now, when I say poor, I'm not speaking here of material things. We've got to get past that. We've got to get past that natural way of thinking of things. What we're looking at is a supernatural life. Now, many times we'll pray to God for stuff, for things. Now, God's not guaranteed to answer that prayer in the the way that we may want it because it might hurt our soul in some way. God wants more for us. Now, He wants to give us spiritual treasures, things like virtue, holiness, love, that is eternal love, and salvation. He wants us to become saints. And this is what God wants us to ask for so that He can grant it. But sadly, often enough, we don't know how to ask. In fact, the epistle of St. James tells us, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. So if we ask amiss, how are we to correct that? What are the necessary conditions for my prayer to be answered? Well, St. Alphonsus, great saint and doctor of the church, gives us three necessary conditions to which this promise of our Lord extends. He says, the first We must pray with humility. The second, we must pray with confidence. And the third, we must pray with perseverance. So we need to pray with humility, with confidence, and perseverance. So let's look at the first point. We must pray with humility. Now I'll start with the the, uh, words of St. James, who tells us that God rejects the prayers of the proud. He says, quote, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, these are those who may trust in their own strength and think of themselves as better than others. Those who think that life is all about me. A lot of times we can look at ourselves, our selfishness, and we could say, well, yeah, how many times have I been down that road? But God answers the prayers of the humble. Now, we'll look to the Word of God for that. He tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, the prayer of him that humbles himself pierces the clouds, and he will not depart until the Most High beholds him. 
the 101st Psalm tells us, the Lord hath had regard to the prayer of the humble. And then St. Augustine, the great doctor of the church, tells us, you humble yourself and God comes to you. You exalt yourself and God flies from you. This is a great gift of humility. So when we want this virtue, we can even pray to our Blessed Mother because she's the greatest model of humility. Pray to her for this virtue so that we can truly pray with humility. But the other thing we can do is have sorrow for our sins. Think of our sins and have sorrow for them. Because when we approach God with sorrow for our sins, acknowledging our weakness, God won't turn away from us. Because we're acknowledging our weakness, we're acknowledging the fact that we need Him. And so the first psalm tells us, A contrite and a humble heart, O God, thou will not despise. So God listens to the prayers of the humble. Now the second point is you must pray with confidence. Now the Gospel of St. Mark says, All things whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and they will come to you. Close quote St. Mark. Now, why would our Lord encourage us so strongly if He didn't wish to answer our prayers? In fact, there's so many times in Scripture that He keeps bringing up the very words, Ask and you shall receive. Now, many times we may even go so far as to say, Why have little confidence in God? Because I'm a sinner, and I've been too ungrateful to Him, and therefore I don't deserve to be heard. Now, these are not the words of humility, but the words of pride. But St. Thomas tells us on this, that the efficacy of our prayers in obtaining graces from God doesn't depend on our merits, but on God's mercy, on divine mercy. So God answers our prayers because of his mercy for us, not because we merit it or we deserve it, but because God looks on us with mercy and we're asking with these three uh, three, three ways, through humility, to um, confidence and perseverance. And so obviously this goes back to the humility thing. We're not looking at our merits when we ask God, but on His mercy to help us. Remember, God loves us, and He has set this thing up to help us to get to heaven. And so God wants us to ask Him. That's His whole point. And we have to make one point clear. As often as we ask prayers conducive to our salvation then God is going to answer our prayers. In fact, He binds Himself to the promise of answering our prayers. But if we ask for something that's harmful to our souls, harmful to our salvation, God is not going to hear us. Now, we put up a situation because God can't hear us. God does not, God is not going to lead us into sin. And remember, we pray in the Our Father, do not, you know, asking Him not to lead us into temptation. So God is never going to lead us into that. So if we're asking for something in prayer, God is not going to lead us into temptation. So He's not going to answer a prayer that's har- harmful for us. For example, if a person is asking for help from God to revenge himself against an enemy, or even to do something that would be offensive to God, Our Lord isn't going to hear those prayers because they're not something that's consistent with God's law. Because even St. John Chrysostom says, such a person offends God in the very act of prayer. He doesn't pray, but in a certain manner offends God. The other situation where God won't hear us is if we won't, won't remove an occasion of sin and we're asking for God's help. For example, if we're always falling into certain sins around certain friends, and we're going to continue hanging around them, even though every time we're around them, they cause us to fall into certain sins, where God's going to look at this, and, you know, God is not going to be mocked. You know, he's going to hope that we're doing something on our part, because we always have to take the active effort ourselves. Not only do we pray, but we also take the active effort to say, I'm going to eliminate these things that are causing me to the best of my ability, and then the rest of it, the weakness, God supplies through our prayer. But then the promise that God makes to us of answering all our prayers doesn't extend to all material or temporal favors, although God still answers these, but only when they're conducive, like we said before, to our spiritual welfare. And that is only if it's good for our souls and for our salvation. That's the only time God will answer these. But when we ask for spiritual favors, such as the forgiveness of our sins, perseverance in virtue, the love of enemies, the gift of divine love and the resignation to God's will. 
We should have absolutely firm confidence that we'll obtain these. Now, how can God refuse grace for the purpose of our salvation to those who seek them when he even exhorts us, or exhorts those who do not pray to ask for them? God doesn't even look into whether the person praying is a just man or a sinner. As he said in the Gospel of St. Luke, he says, everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that asks, receives. Sinner or just man? Because God wants all men to be saved, so all we need to do is ask God. And that's the confidence that we have to pray with. And so that brings us to the third point. We must pray with perseverance. Above all, we've said we have to persevere in prayer until death and never cease praying. This is the most important thing. In fact, St. Luke tells us we ought always to pray. St. Paul to the Thessalonians writes, Pray without ceasing. Now, the Gospel of St. Luke gives us the greatest example of this. And if you remember the parable that our Lord brings up, He says, One of you goes to goes at night to a friend and say to him, Lend me three loaves. The friend will answer, I'm in bed and the door is locked. I can't get up. But if the other continues to knock at the door and won't leave, the friend will rise and give him as many loaves as he wishes, not through friendship, but to be free from his nagging. In fact, I'll quote what St. Luke actually writes. He says, quote, Although he will not rise and give him because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, his nagging, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. So God wants us to persevere in prayer even to the point of nagging him. Now, this isn't disrespectful. I'll go through exactly the words of the saints. Starting with St. Matthew, who says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Now, the church fathers tell us it wasn't enough for our Lord to say ask. He added seek and knock in order to show us that we should not cease in our prayer. This nagging is agreeable to God. So we have to persevere in prayer. Our Lord wants us. Remember, He's a good and loving Father. And like every good and loving Father, He will not refuse those things that are good for us. And He wants us to ask. And He's waiting for us to ask. Because it's in asking that we start to develop that relationship with Him. And it's in asking that we strengthen our faith in Him. So we need to ask. And God put this into the whole equation of things so that we do ask to help ourselves get to heaven. So for prayer to be effective, we need to satisfy three necessary conditions. We have to pray with humility, we have to pray with confidence, and we have to pray with perseverance. When we pray, we begin to understand the spiritual life. The spiritual life is not just a part of reality, it actually is the reality of this life. Because this is the finality of where we're all going. Remember, we're on a plan here. We're all going to die, we're going to end up somewhere. We have to find out all the spiritual reality of how to get there. When we start to see the things of the Spirit more clearly, then we start to put our importance on them. Then we start developing a fuller understanding of what we're here for and what this whole thing called life is all about. Now, God is so much a part of our life, and He wants to become more and more a part of our life. This is why He wants us to pray. In fact, He is life itself. Now, the whole life of the saints was one of meditation and prayer and complete trust and confidence in God. All the graces by means of which they became saints, they have received in answer to prayer. So if we want to be saved and become saints, we need to ask it of God. Those that are in the bondage of mortal sin need to ask God for mercy to break that bond. Those that are truly seeking God and the wisdom to find the truth need to ask this of God, as the blind men in the gospel did, who said, Lord, that I may see. If we need humility, let us ask for it, and we'll be humble. If we need patience under tribulations and interior peace, let us ask for it, and we will be patient, and we will have peace. If you want divine love, let us ask for it, and we will obtain it. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Our Lord promised this many times in Holy Scripture because He means it. 
And He continues to fulfill His promises whenever we pray to Him. Remember, He loves us. He wants us to get to heaven. He wants us to ask for that help to get to heaven. But it's up to us. So let us listen to His loving words and His loving promise. Ask, and it shall be given to you. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.